Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting, Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I'm going to talk about a very important subject. I'm going to talk about a parenting uh, topic of interviews, interviewing your children. Let me tell you how this happened. It was back in the 80s. My husband and I went to a conference down in Orange County, and one of the speakers that we listened to was pretty amazing. They were on different parenting topics. And this speaker talked about how he traveled a lot and he was away from his kids and so he wanted to think of ways that he could still create this bond. And so what he and his wife, they put their heads together and they decided that they were going to interview their kids once a week for about 20 minutes and each individually. And he said that he started that, and even when he had tra was traveling and he was away from his kids, he would call them on the phone. And back then, you know, it was long-distance phone bill, and he said it didn't matter to him. What was more important is that he had this one-on-one -on -one interview, even though it was over the phone, with each one of his children. And his wife also took half of the kids, and she interviewed, and then they would switch off. The thing that I remember the most about what he said is he said, look... Parenting isn't easy, and it gets even more complicated when they become teenagers. And he said the one thing that they noticed is that when their children became teenagers and they as parents were desperate for them to listen to them, they listened to them. And he and his wife credit it with the fact that they started these interviews with their kids when they were two years old. They established this incredible bond with their children so that when they did get to be teens, their teens trusted them. They knew that their parents loved them. They knew that their parents would spend time, would go to the mat for them. They knew that their parents would listen to them, all of those things. And so they followed their parents' advice. And he gave several different examples. So just hearing that was enough for me and my husband. We decided, okay, this is something that we're doing. So we went home and we created uh, weekly interviews with our kids. And we started when they were about two years old. Now, there was a bunch of things. We would ask them all open-ended questions about school, about friends, about goals, and, you know, a lot of the things that we asked them on date nights. But then we went steps further. We would ask them... Um, about things that maybe were difficult and we called it, you know, that these were going to be difficult things that we were going to talk about. And so we would ask them, you know, tell me about this math class or tell me about this math test that you didn't do so well. How can we help you? What can we do to support you in this? We talked about their friendships that they had with friends. I mean, did they have good friends? And we had a party every Friday night once they reached middle school for them so we could actually see their friends. But even in the younger years, we wanted to know, tell me about your friends. Tell me about their goals. Tell me about their homes. Tell, you know, because we wanted them to surround themselves with good friends as well. Now, one thing, if, if there was something that they did during the week to one of their siblings or they acted inappropriately, Obviously, we talked to them about that then, but we would bring it up again in the interview and talk more about it. The other thing is, when I was growing up, there, you know, parents aren't perfect. They make mistakes. But so what I really felt was really important was if I made a mistake during the week, if, I, if my parenting skills were lousy for whatever reason, I felt like I owed an apology <clears throat> to my kids. And so when we did the interviews... If there was a way that I acted inappropriately that week, I apologized to them. And I went into detail and I talked to them about it and said, look, I didn't handle this well. I want to ask for your forgiveness. I screwed it up. And so would they, instead of making it look like I was a weaker parent, I think in my kids' eyes, and they later told me, that they really appreciated that, that I was not too big uh, to say that I was sorry. And Something that triggered that was in my own home life when I was raised as a child. My parents did whatever and they never apologized for anything. And I remember that it made me very angry as a kid. So that was one thing that was very important. The other aspect of interviews, and I'm just going to go into this a little bit, was you want to help your kids learn how to problem solve. And we did something really interesting, It was, and it really worked. And I just had them take an eight and a half by sheet of paper, fold it in half, and whatever the problem was is I wanted them to put at the top reasons I should do this, and then on the other side, reasons I should not do it. In other words, the pros for doing something and then the cons for doing something. Now, the important part of this thing is you have to write them down. 
Okay, so I would have them go through the exercise right there in the interview, and they would write down all the pros, then they would write down all the cons. There's something about writing this down that they're able to look at it, and they're able to almost immediately see the answer to the problem. You ought to try it. with, If you have a concern or a problem or something that you're faced with, then look at, write these things down, the pros and the cons, <clears throat> and and then look at it, and for some reason it just pops. There was something that I ended up with 13 pros and 13 cons, but as soon as I had written it down, I could see immediately of what I needed to do and how I needed to solve the problem. So we taught them different skills. Another thing is no cell phones. Get rid of the cell phones, have that 20 minutes, 30 minutes, along with your child, <clears throat> that you're just doing this one-on-one -on -one interview with them. Make sure you give them eye contact. Make sure you're actively listening. Make sure you're not giving undue criticism. Now, also I wanted my children to know that I love them. Now, we take for granted that our kids might just assume that we love them, but we can't take anything for granted. If you go on my blog, I'll tell you all different things that I did. I actually wrote these different things down on I love you because, I like you because. There's a whole list of them on different things that I wrote down so that I can prepare that is something that I could give to them even as teens, that they could keep that and have that, that they could refer to it when they were down or depressed or angry or whatever emotion that they were feeling. I wanted them to have that so that they, they knew how I felt about them as a parent. Now, did this work? Yeah, this was probably the most powerful, things we, powerful thing we ever did with our kids. When they became teenagers, a couple of them did have struggles, and, and uh, we had to ask them some tough questions. And we had to, one of our sons, we had to ask him, you know, your friends aren't a good influence. And at the age of 16, we said, okay, we need you to think about uh, finding new friends. And guess what? He listened to us and it made all the difference in the world. Again, you can read more in depth uh, about this and how interviews and how we structured them and how we did them on my blog. Let me leave you with this quote. It's by um, H. Jackson Brown. Live so that when your children think of fairness, caring, and integrity, they think of you. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.